Hi, my name is Jorge Ramirez. I'm from Universidad Nacional uh, in Medellín, Colombia. Um, I will be giving a talk about uh, how we use Wolfram language to uh, produce uh, problem sheets and just manage large mathematics courses. My name is uh, Jorge Ramirez. I'm, um, I'm a professor of mathematics at the Universidad Nacional de Colombia in uh, Medellín. Um, I do, I'm a Mathematica user for the last well, I don't know, 15, 18 years. I do stochastic processes, modeling in the natural sciences. Uh, but uh, I'm also an educator, and I'm gonna show you here some things, some um, interesting and maybe novel things, some novel ways of using uh, the Wolfram language in, um, in education. Uh, you, might, uh, you might appreciate it. Um, so first, a little bit of, uh, this is where I live. This is South America, that's uh, Colombia, and that's a map of our campus. So my university is a somewhat big university, and it has a, it's mostly an engineering school. So we have a lot of students in engineering, and I'm part of the math department. So uh, there, what we do is that the math department teaches classes, uh, the math classes to all the engineering students. So the, as a result, uh, we have this, the following problem we have what we call coordinated classes. So like me, I am the coordinator of the differential calculus class. Now the differential calculus class is 23 sections with 23 different professors and a total of 1,700 students, 1,800 students taking the same class during one given semester. And they have recitations and they have, you know, um, TAs and so on. But the, the important thing is that for we have the system to ensure quality that is that uh, we all evaluate the same simultaneously all the students. So they, are, they have to take all the same tests. Even though they go to different classes, they have different professors, the curriculum is the same, and we evaluate them simultaneously with the same problems. So <clears throat> we need to keep, um, the challenge then is to um, give resources and opportunities for students in order to, to, so they all have, can uniformly study and prepare for the same tests, okay? And, and we do that in, you know, several ways. So we use as, uh, as our um, software of choice that the university, you know, uses, we use Moodle. So this is, a, this is our website. Uh, so you have all the standard stuff. And here we have, uh, uh, I'll tell you what this is. This, this is, we, we do use Mathematica in the classroom. So what I'm showing you here is things like this. Here's a, here's a CDF about, you know, exponential functions. And, you know, it has the usual stuff. And the, the way I use this and the way I have uh, uh, TAs use this is that we have this uh, in the classroom during lectures uh, right next to the blackboard. And uh, we teach and we do interactive calculations and we do we use the CDF as both in class to guide our lectures, but also as supplemental inter interactive material for students so they can you know, take home and print or you know, play with it and so on. Okay. So we, we do do that, uh, which is kind of a wonderful yet standard way of using Mathematica in the classroom. But I wanna show you something different. Okay, so the, uh, that we have this, if, you, if you're a math teacher, you have this problem of, you know, assigning math problems, right? And then, you know, they have to have, we have to have problem sheets for all our students, and the problem sheets have to be, you know, relevant enough, and they have to prepare them and assist them in their study process so they can, you know, not fail the exam. Um, now, how do you, so you have this, bunch of problems you have written all your life and you want to assign them and you know write them up so the, the students can try to solve them and this, those problems are used for problem sheets re, uh, practice exams recitation activities and exams okay so we came up with this idea that maybe it will be great to um, streamline that process somehow so I'm gonna show you uh, our solution to this um, it's, it's a math problem database, and it has two components. It has, we use LaTeX, so it has a folder of problem statements, 
uh, I'm going to show you. This is it. You can see my. This is just my file. So you see, this is the, our database. And each of these folders has a, a little snippet of LaTeX code. So, so like here's a here's a little problem. It has just some late some LaTeX code. And in this particular problem, as you know, it has something, but it also has uh, like many of them. It has an associated figure. Right, so a, a database of problem is just a bunch of folders. In each folder, you have a little bit of LaTeX code that is, you know, um, and uh, whatever PDF or any other uh, associated material with the LaTeX code in it. Okay, so this is our database. So that's the first component of our database. It is all these folders is my problem database. Each each one of these folders has a, has a different problem. There's like a thousand of them now. Now, the second part of the uh, database is very interesting. Um, okay, oh, sorry, I'll tell you something else. Each problem has, this is a database, so it has fields. So there are three fields that identify each problem. The, the one is subject, so which subject is, is this limit, is it functional uh, differential equations, is this exponential functions. The other one is difficulty, so a number from one to 10 telling me how difficult this problem is. And the third one is type. So what type of problem is this? Is this a word problem? Is this a conceptual problem? Is this a calculation problem? So there's three fields. And there's another field that is important because um, many problems have common statements. For example, solve the following limit or find or uh, graph the following function. So you have, so I don't want to have, you, you, I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. So common statements, it's one of the fields that a problem may have. So that's, those are my, my fields in each problem. And the other part of uh, my database is very interesting because what it is, is a, pro, is a solution sheet, a solution manual. Um, I'll show you one of them. Here's, uh, here, here are all my solution manuals. So they're just, they were just written by TAs. Here's a solution manual. The solution manual is written in as a mathematical notebook. So here's the solution, the solution for problem 498. And uh, sometimes it's text, sometimes it's just a calculation. Solution 495 is just a, that calculation. Uh, sometimes it's just, it, sometimes it has, you know, plots and it has some text accompanied. It's, it's a solution, right? It's a solution to the problem. Sometimes it's just a single line, like say computer limit. But it's just a full notebook with a random collection of problems that were solved by this particular person out of my database. So those, those, that's the, those are the components of my database. A bunch of folders of problems. Each problem has some fields. And then a bunch of notebooks in random order with, a, with sections covering all the solutions of my problems. OK. Now, OK, what do we do with that? So here's what, you, what, we, what we do. So I have this little package. It doesn't have many functions. But what I'm going to do now here is I'm going to create my database. Here's what it's doing right now. It's going through all the folders in LaTeX, extracting all the tech, and creating a data set object very conveniently um, so I can manage that. And, and then I save it as an MX. So I, had to, I, I only had to do this once. Or whatever, whenever I update my folders, I just do this. And then I, it read the 1,000 problems or so. And it created this uh, data, data set object um, that has, you know, the number of the problem, the subject, the difficulty, the type, whether it has a common statement or not, the statement of the problem, and it has whether it has figures or not, and it has in which file do I have the solution, right? That's my database, and it's a database, data set object. Retrieving that, saving that as an MX file is very easy. Retrieving that is instantaneous, okay? On that MX file, on that database, oh, here's another, another little piece of thing I need. This is the... Um, this is the list of common statements. So uh, there's 19 possible common statements. Say one of them says compute the following limit. Or a very important one is, is this true or false? Right? So those are common statements that I have. Um, I have only 19 of them. If I want to add more, let's just add more. Now that I have a database, I can make a query. Right? So here's a query in which I want to select, let's see, all problems. I want to select 25 random samples of problems of subjects four, five, or six, 
of difficulty between four and seven. Okay, so here's the what there's, there's 25 problems there. They're sorted in a rational way, so they're sorted by their group by common statements, say, if there's any common statements, and they're sorted by subject, right? And, and within them, they're sorted by the difficulty or type. I don't remember, but here's a, this is actually a collection of databases, uh, data sets objects that I get out of that. Now, now that I selected my problems, there's, um, there's a cool step. I want to create a tech file that has, I want to create a PDF file with those problems. So what does that entail? That entails that I, I had to take a preamble, paste it. I, I had to create a new file, take a preamble, paste it, then look for all the problems of pasting them in the right order and respecting common statements. So say, say, take, the two, take the five or six true or false that were selected, put them as an item within an enumerate uh, environment, put the, the correct statement on top of it, and also, if I find any problem that has a PDF file attached to it, I have to retrieve that PDF file and put it in the same folder as, right? That's what, that's what it entails, that, that's what it is. So let's do that, so that is this function. So if you see, this is my folder. There's no test here, there's no folder. I'm not gonna cheat, this is like magic. So I'm gonna call this function that creates text and it's gonna create, put everything in a new folder called test, right? So. Let's just run it, and that's actually instantaneous. So now there's a test folder here that has a tech file and all the PDF that were select all the PDF that were selected, right? So that tech file is well, that is a standalone tech file. I'm just gonna write, uh, open up with whatever it is that you open up tech files. Here's the preamble, and here are the all the problems. So here's a problem. Here's uh, here's a problem. It has a, the collection of all the problems, and this should compile. Um, and that's the PDF. So the PDF has some features that are nice. That are, so it has the correct, the, the, the graphics. Each problem has an identifier with the number. So the first problem in this particular PDF is number four, uh, 0471. It has a little triangle there that tells the student which, uh, the difficulty of the problem. And with that identifier, he can just go and then get the solution. Um, well, it is what it is, right? It's just uh, all the problems, whatever, here's a problem, here's a common statement, right? There's a common statement and there were selected four problems that have that common statement, so they're correctly labeled where, where they're supposed to be, and so, okay. Great, so I have now a problem sheet that was randomly selected from my database. All right, what about the solution? Well, then you create the solution. Now, creating the solution entails something, something similar about manipulating notebooks, because there I had to get all my problem lists and mine the notebook files and get all the sections out and put them, and you can actually see this live because the, all these uh, notebook manipulation uh, um, functions actually work, so th there is, it's just building live all the, the, putting, pasting all the sections with the right, and then it disappears. And then I, well, I can open it up again. And then that, uh, it's in my folder, and now it has this MB file that has all the solutions. So you just retrieve the solutions from the data, from the whatever, right? And so that's the product. Look, oh, almost. That's almost the product. Because um, I'll show you later the things I don't know how to do. And so maybe you can help me. Look, uh, uh, but I want to show you two further applications of this um, that we use in my school. Is this one? Is this? Uh, so we have recitations, right? And uh, and there's 33 recitation sessions, and uh, in each recitation, like it's just like this size, and then the, you, you the students pair up and they solve easy, an easy problem. Now that problem comes out of the database, but it's very important that there's since there's 33 sections of recitations, each recitation has to have a slightly different problems. So here's, um, so here's a PDF we generate automatically in which there's actually 33 PDFs here. And each PDF, each page has the se section number, has the name of the TA, has the, and has slightly different values of these parameters for the particular problem. So we randomize that over a given set. Each problem specifies which 
pro which parameters you can randomize and on which range. And then we just produce automatically this set of PDFs. Notice that this is, uh, say, 4 and 6.5, and then this one is 4 and 5.5. Right? It's the same, and it has the different TA and the different section, the, where it is, and the time. And the, so that's one application. A little, something a little bit more, um, more sophisticated is the following, is for exams. So we have 1,700 students taking the same exam at the same time. That takes most of our campus, actually. In, you know, it's, uh, it's something like uh, it's something like around 50 classrooms for those students. And it, we're talking about Colombia, right? So it's, there's cheating. Um, so we're very careful about cheating, right? And so there's a couple of things you need to do. And we do this automatically. So uh, a couple of cool things here I'll show you. We, uh, this is what the proctor in person, this is all generated automatically. This is what the proctor gets. The proctor gets, um, we, take, we go to every classroom, we retrieve the geometry of the classroom, so how many rows, and, uh, and to each seat we associate a number, and this number is, corresponds to an exam, and the exam is automatically, um, this, is, this is an exam. So if you notice, this is exam number one out of 1,700 that automatically has the name of the student, his identification, and where it's gonna take the exam, and it has the problems from the database. So we pasted the problems from the database there, the appropriate problems, and it has, it has a bunch of labels. In particular, it has this label, because there's actually four, uh, four versions of the exam, because you get uh, exam subject A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D, or whatever it is that, according to the geometry of the classroom, we, we, we decide is the better way of doing this. So that's another application. And these exams are then, you can do a bunch of them. You see all these labels here. There are a labeling system that allow, allows us to uh, not, never lose an exam. So I give the exams according to the first label, I collect them and organize them according to the second label, I grade them according to the third label, and I punch in the grades according to the fourth label. You know, when you have 1,700 uh, exams with 40 people grading them, you don't want to lose an, a single exam. So that's, it, has helped us, it has helped us greatly never lose an exam again. Um, okay. I want to show you, I'm about to finish, but I, I want to show you something I don't know how to do. And I would really like to know how to do. I would like a student to go somewhere online, hopefully Moodle, Moodle, and uh, fill out a form like this. So here's, uh, here's what I would really love. I would love a student to say, oh, I want, give me please, uh, I don't know, 34 problems between difficulty three and seven of the subjects five and six and two. And I wanted to put on the folder number, on the folder name Jorge. So I want somewhere to to put that form online, where a student can do that. that, that part is easy, I think. They submit, then somehow my database has to be in that thing, and now it's running. So this is created automatically, and then the student can click. And there's a very important extra step I had no idea how to do. I would like Mathematica to, comp to tell LaTeX to compile my LaTeX code. So compile automatically, create a PDF, Create a notebook. Create a notebook, and it should be right here, maybe. Oh, it said it couldn't do it. Why? Oh. Well, create the um, create the PDF file, create the notebook, and then download out automatically. And the, the reason I want to do that is that um, it's not to save my time. <laughs> it's uh, what I really what I really like is to turn this into a an assisted, lear assisted learning system in which a student can, can go say, okay, it's four in the afternoon on a Monday, I would like to study math. And then you go in, okay, my, set, my exam is on limits. And I, okay, can, I, can you please give me 10 practice problems of limits in easy ones, and then you get them. And then since I get the solution manual, the student can then give feedback. It's not about grading, it's about assisting study. The, the, the student can get, feed, get feedback, and based on that feedback, I can then suggest the next 10 problems. 
and so on, and then assist the student through his, her or her study, right, until he is able to complete the harder problems or the relevant problems for the particular test. So uh, that's the, that's the, uh, the, uh, the dream, which is pretty far away from, but uh, that's uh, what we're trying to go with. This is a system of personalized study, and maybe, hopefully, it can be smart and use uh, artificial intelligence to, okay, what, what do a stu uh, student that did this correctly, what should be, or her, what, sh what should she be able to do the next? So that's, uh, that's the goal. And uh, I think that's all I have to show you, so if you have any questions.